What's up, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Min Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today I have the pleasure of talking to three gentlemen here. We have Chris Northrup. Is that it? Northrup? Hey. All right, from Magnetic Press. Uh, the gentleman below me is Christian Dabari, the artist on this wonderful looking book. And if you all have seen the inside of this book, it is amazing. The link is in the description of the video if you haven't yet. And then Mark Shea, the horrible future creator. Uh, so this, we are joined here to talk about one of the latest Kickstarters from Magnetic Press, and that is the Black Box Chronicles. And what got me was the one word, a new science, sci-fi, graphic novel anthology, and it's the anthology part that got me, because I'm a big fan of those type of stories. Um, so we have a lot of names attached to this project. I saw Michael Avon Oming, David Mack attached to this. Uh but what is everybody's role here in this particular book? Yeah, so so Chris and I came up with it. We're the creators, co-creators, and uh, writers on almost everything, except for uh, some guest writers. Okay. And, uh, you know, Chris came to me uh, and said, basically, let's do an anthology. And um, we brainstormed, like, what, what could be the connective tissue for an anthology? You know, okay. there have been so many. And the thought was, what if every single story and this one has 15, was the tale of the recordings of a flight data recorder, of a black box of a crashed spaceship. And then what if we got a different artist to interpret each of those stories? So what you're getting here is like each one is the story of a crashed spaceship and what happened and what led to that crash. Oh, that's, that's, that's good. I like that. Um, you know, that could make for a good TV show too. Just saying. Just I mean, <laughs> if anyone's listening uh, so okay so he came together as, as a comic book and uh chris approached you by the way before we go any further big shout out to mitch for helping put this together yes. for mitch coordinating awesome. with everybody and and reaching out and uh you're sending me the book or the, the digital version of the book so i can look at it and it, it looks amazing so when you when you envision this and you envision an anthology, you immediately thought graphic novel format or do you ever think single issue format? How, how did you approach or what made you think, let's go ahead and do this as a graphic novel? I mean, I think that because it's there's so many stories, we want to create this giant sandbox. Um, early on, Chris and I realized we're creating a universe and it takes place during what we call the great outward expansion. And mm -hmm. it's when the everyday person has the ability to travel in space. It's kind of like the gold rush. And we thought there's going to be a lot of people and uh, they're going to be flying in their spaceships and there's going to be accidents, you know, as they explore these uh, new brave new worlds. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought that an anthology was, would be perfect, especially when you get different illustrators giving their own little twists on um, the type of stories so like Christian, for example, is genius at horror. Right. And then we have others that are, are more along the lines of Star Trek or a Black Mirror, or a Twilight Zone. So we thought, we have this connective tissue, and we have this one main character. We have these bookends by this guy named The Scavenger, and he's collecting mm -hmm. black boxes for unknown reasons, Chris and I know, but for unknown reasons right now to the reader. And we thought like it would be perfect for an anthology. It would be perfect to tell these little bite-sized stories of 15 different crashes, and they all have little bits of connective tissue in this universe. Um, and we have, we, we have big plans, you know, going on in the future, but each story is its own standalone as well. So we thought it would be super cool to have a standalone story, 15 mm -hmm. standalone stories that could then later be mentioned. You know, these characters and places and events all are leading somewhere as well as being these individual stories. So we're excited about that. So that's why, that's why we went with an anthology. Gotcha. Okay. And when you're, when you're working with different artists, like, do you have you like, for example, have you and Christian worked before together? Yeah, Christian and I, uh, that's I, actually my my very first project. And I, I have a printout. We uh, we did a horror uh, that a horror um, story called Doomsday Cookbook. And I can give you a look. Oh, look at these amazing. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, we worked, uh, that was what, around 2020, Christian? It was, right? it was, it was right when the pandemic. It was kind of like when everything closed down, all the artists were, you know, kind of like, 
I think it's fair to say like freaking out, like what's going on with the career. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's going on. And uh, I was. <laughs> I, I, at least Chris was, I don't know about Christian. Well, Same. You, know, you know what, you know, what's interesting is like when um, we started that, that's when I got hired by magnetic. That's when Mike Kennedy yeah. hired me. Yeah. So it was like right at that time, you know, like everything happened. Like as soon as the world started spinning out of control for us, for our stuff. Yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, it was some interesting times, that's for sure, and there was a lot of ins- uncertainty. And mm-hmm. yeah, I remember the whole pencils down movement. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh, so you you two got together and made that book right there. So this is your yeah. would this be your second project working together? This would be with- the second, but but it, the other one hasn't been released yet. So we're actually releasing Black Box first, and then we're going to follow it up with cool. several other projects. One of which is is Doomsday Cookbook. And what's mm-hmm. also great, by the way, going back to an anthology is you get to know personalities and you get to know who, how to, how to write for them and how to work with them. And, and Christian and I, like, I mean, I, I call him a friend. I mean, like we've, we've met up at a couple of cons. Um, yep. We talk about movies, you know, like we have, we have similar tastes in movies. It gets to the point where I don't have to um, write as much in the script. You learn a lot about collaboration, right? And that comes up a lot in comic books, um, mm-hmm. but you learn the, the nuances of each um, and, and what, what sources like Christian knows my favorite movies now, mm-hmm. my favorite comics. So when I write a scene, he's going to write it and lean into that scene, you know, like, so like my favorite movie is Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, and, about and, the pinball machine. and the and we already <laughs> talked about the pinball machine in the back. Right. Um, and, uh, so, so Christian knows that. So if I have a scene where there is going to be a face melting, you know, he's going to have a little bit of a reference <laughs> to that. Whereas another artist might not, and another artist might not, um, do uh, body horror as much as uh, Christian does, but yeah, yeah. So, so we I worked with Christian, but everybody else um, is new for me. Okay, so, um, so because you 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 have worked with him in the past, the script like when you're writing scripts like this, because I'm, I'm always curious when you're writing scripts for anthologies, does it differ from artist to artist as you're writing the script? Like, um, you you know that he does horror well, so you're like, oh, I'm gonna save this particular story uh, for Christian because I know he's got this. Um, and he did the story, a cold dark space. Is that right? In in Correct. the anthology. Yep. Yep. So so awesome. to answer your question, absolutely. You know that you're going to lean into the artist's talent, right? So when mm-hmm. we see Christian, there's going to be some form of horror <laughs> and, and <laughs> action and. Um, I don't want to give away too much of what his story is about, but um, there is, you know, it, it, it's a Christian story, right? And and there's going there's going to be another one. For example, Re- Return to Ascender um, is a is a, a Geo um, Giovanni, yeah. From uh, uh, you, if you've seen Letters from Animals or any of those books from Magnetic, he's he's I very have. children. Um, I, I believe type of illustration, but also very animated, very Disney looking. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that story, which Mark Russell wrote that one. Um, it is, uh, it really leans into his skills. Like I, I, I was, I would, I was always looking at Gio's work at Magnetic thinking, man, Giovanni would be, what if we got him to do something sci-fi, but with a child <laughs> in that Disney look, you know? So, and we got that. Um, so Chris, how long have you been at Magnetic Press? Uh, two years now. So you've been there two years. Okay. But I've known Mike Kennedy for um my boss for the, the owner of magnetic for, for mm-hmm. years from um from like oh my god from the first so he his first book that he did i hand with my uh pre- ex-girlfriend i handed out the books with him in la comic-con when mm-hmm. he just had this little table with like this one book like stacks of it it was it's i i've been involved with mike for a very long time and he worked at archaea as a publisher Yep, when I, I remember my that creator owned book, The Reason for Dragons. So, oh, that, that, Christian, that's awesome! Yeah, yeah, Christian. I remember that, I made just, that with Sean. So, mm-hmm. yep, yeah. I so, remember his, uh, his years at um, at Dark Horse. He was at Dark Horse, and of yeah. course, yeah, in Mike, Arcadia. Mike's been, Mike's been around, uh, so I'm very happy for him that he has his own uh, place where he can really do the things that he feels. Because, you know, a lot of our books are not, um, I don't want to say mainstream and fall into that, but they're not, um, you know, they're not types in capes comics, right? They're, a lot of them are coming from Europe. A lot of them are 
you know, specialty books from the United States. We're doing things like bigger properties like Lupin. And I, there's like four of them that I can't talk about right now. They're like, you're going to want me back on the podcast. But, um, you know, he has this whole audience for these types of books that people don't get from the other companies. So it's, it's great. And you know, you guys love hardcovers. We we only, we like only do hardcovers. So, yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of the magnetic press, like the look and the style. You know, whenever you see those rounded edges. Oh yeah, the I'm, rounded hard. Case. I love those. I'm a big fan of those, uh, and I've been following them for quite a number of years. And whenever I do overviews of of books, and I have them in my hall, you know, viewers of mine want to know what are those and most of the ones that i've gotten in the past had been you know european releases or i'm sorry translations of european comics brought over here sure. so a lot of people are like oh they're kind of like humanoid and but you guys very, have been doing very, your own yeah. Yeah. but you guys have also been doing your own things such as this kickstarter here so i guess that's my next question my follow up question is in, in the past magnetic press had done books uh that had been available through diamond distribution yes. and when why the kickstarter route for something like this uh just that just i've always wondered like what makes a book go kickstarter and what makes a book so we, no let's just go ahead and release it to, uh, to the mass audience yeah um we um we found because initially with mike starting the company mm -hmm. with no you know, kind of backing, you know, just going off and doing it himself with his, you know, partners. It, it wasn't like a sure thing to like get this out through Diamond, get this out through this channel, get this in the store. It was going to be difficult. So Kickstarter seemed like a logical route at the start of Magnetic Press. But um, we also found that like, wow, there's like this direct market that wants to buy these books like straight away, you know, that want to make sure that um, they get you know, the special casing, the foil edges, the this, the that, right? All the extra stuff that we can put into it. You know, people who actually support these books are actually making these books better, you know, a better quality. And Magnetic is already starting at a really high quality, right? So they're, they're really like, we, we view our readers at Magnetics as like really as partners, you know, to bring a lot of the stuff the best possible way that it can be brought. And, you know, our stuff still goes through Diamond, you know, I just made... Yes. I just made the ad. It's a double spread ad for black box that's going to be slapped in the middle of the diamond. But then again, the you know when you buy black box in the store, you're not going to get the David Mack hardcover, mm -hmm. right? Like there's stuff that's exclusive for the people that are supporting it to make it better, you know. And we always have our books 100% done before we put them anywhere, Kickstarter or otherwise. So um, this is no different. And um, it was uh, I give Mark a lot of credit for being his first rodeo, working with so many artists at the same time. And, you know, we hit deadline. So we, we met that magnetic seal of approval, you know. So I, I think it's also like important, like the Kickstarter is really the exclusive crowd for someone like yourself. Right? Sure. Where you're going to get the expensive. It's more expensive to make you know, the spot. Well, they can't. They can't. Of course. Right. And then yeah, when we go to trade paperback case. Yeah. Absolutely. When, we, you know, when, when you go to a, a bookstore or a retailer, they're not going to be as hardcore. They're not going to be the same people. Um, so we want to, well, this is actually an, exp an experiment. We're having a different cover, David Mack cover for the exclusive da David Mack cover, hardcover um, on the Kickstarter um, for a prestige level mm -hmm. for, for, again, you know, collectors who are probably listening to this. And then the person who's just browsing through a bookstore and wants a really cool new world science fiction um, we can lower the price point and have a trade paperback. So we, you know, we're going, this is an experiment too, but we think Kickstarter might be able to splinter the audiences a little bit while keeping the center the same. Uh, yeah. You, how do I uh, word this? I, I thought it, it, it's both a brilliant idea to do something like that because you guys have cornered that, you know, we're collectors and collectors like to feel like, Oh, I have this limited book that's only 500 copies of it out there, and I'm one of the 500, and I kickstarted this. I, I, we've been doing that for years with video games and, and toys and book sure. books. Uh, you know, that's something the the big two publishers like Marvel and DC don't do. They release books out to the mass market, and it, it, they're smaller companies that have done very similar. And there's 
into uh, people that are independently kickstarting this stuff in a very similar way with like offering all these uh, whether it's bookmarks or keychains or whatever it is to to kind of make people feel like look this is the only place you can get them i think it's a great idea uh i think there are companies and i'm not going to say any names there are companies that have just uh have done it poorly and have offered the exact same thing through Kickstarter as well as Diamond, meaning the people that kickstarted the books felt less special because you could get the, the exact same thing through your comic book store at a discounted price. And that's when it really like that that's when it becomes a problem. But I haven't seen that happen through Magnetic Press. You guys have exclusive covers. You have oh my gosh, slip case, slip case. We have, just we have minis. Cool. That is, yeah, I looked at this and I was like, this is larger than the one that you're going to get, but this is actually like a little a prototype. I mean, this is a spaceship originally designed by Zach Howard, and then our um, concept artist Shane Molina fleshed it out, and then uh, we brought it into 3D and I uh, resin printed it. But I mean, the details on this thing. Um, now, th this is going to be only you know three to three to four inches, let's say. But every you know that's what you're going to get at the Kickstarter. You're not getting that at at your retail store, you know. <laughs> So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, now you guys are starting to get into the model people and the people that like toys. And well, I see Christian back there with some uh with some figures, Christian. I'm sorry, I've been eyeing your background. Dude. Oh uh yeah, it's my uh my habit. My get the very bad. Agents. Oh my god bless you, dude. <laughs> yeah, very very bad habit here of uh collecting figures. Um they're everywhere. I mean they're all around my, my drafting table, they're behind me and shelves and wall shelves and everything and it's uh everything from transformers to horror figures to dark fantasy movie i don't know everything it's a it's a bad habit um I've but got yeah the same habit too. and now you're mixing yeah. comics with uh collectors like myself and, and christian that like uh you know figures of stuff and it'd be cool to own a figure of something you've worked at ah oh yeah yeah definitely i mean i've come close a couple times uh, without going into any kind of negativity or whatever past uh, publishers that make promises. But yeah, I used to work in toys I used, a long time ago. I used to work for uh, Hasbro and Art Asylum. Um, mm -hmm. I used to do control art for figures and it's, it's, it's super cool. I mean, you know, I love them, but uh, yeah, there's nothing cooler than that. Seeing your work actually become, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, and I think when working with Christian, that's actually really cool because he's so good at like the turns. He had to design these 2D turns to make the 3D toys in the first place. That's what he was doing, what, mm -hmm. I don't know, decades ago, Christian, right? You know, so oh, yeah. you know, that, that's his expertise. Um, so, so ship design, creature design, product design, uh, not, not product design, but uh, uh, character design. Um, mm -hmm. He's just like, you know, perfection at that. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. It was good training. I'll say that to to do the primitive primitive version of that because now everything you can do it like digitally. I wish I had the tools then. You know that you know we have now because back back then it was all paper and pencil and you know light box and just had to keep going over it if it had to be you know redone, changed, whatever. Now it's you could do that so much quicker on digital you know, with like a iPad or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, that stuff's great. I mean, I, lo I still love that stuff and I still use um, that knowledge that I, I, you know, I did decades ago um, for projects like this. So. Well, I'm glad they have you involved. Yeah, uh, we're that, happy that, <laughs> that, can, that comes in handy for sure. So then I have to ask the obvious question. You, you, you have all these publishers available. What I know the reason between Chris and Mark, like, but I, I assume, like, why why go through Magnetic Press, or did you think about self publishing first, or did you think about any other publisher, or was this a Magnetic Press project to begin with? Do you want to answer that stratification, Mark? Yeah. So so there is a little bit of overlap, right? You know, cause it, cause it, cause it's interesting, you know, Chris is with horrible future and magnetic press. So it's this, it's this hybrid. Um, and, and to be honest, like, like I was saying before, you know, Christian was like, you know, listen, I think we're thinking about doing an anthology at magnetic press. 
and that's when you know horrible future you know we'd already been working on that previous book with christian um doomsday mm -hmm. cookbook and we thought like let's let's shift gears and maybe we can present something and um they liked it and that that became black box chronicles so yeah um first of all i love the quality of the books right mm -hmm. so to have an anthology with this level of talent that we were able to achieve I don't think we would have gotten this level of a talent, this level of talent, you know, you know, like um, David Mack and, and Mike Oming, uh, Taki Soma, who co-wrote two of the stories. Um, these are these are people who have been in the business and they understand and they can probably go anywhere they want. And there's a thing about Magnetic that these books are gorgeous. You know, they I mean, we have proof these books, this book in particular, what, like four or five times now? I mean, like we are yeah. moving individual periods at the end of sentences i mean like we are uh, chris has, has we're, we're, we're we're meticulous at magnetic i was uh, i was can, holding oh, can can we, we use slip cases so. yeah can we, can we can we see that slip case for a second yeah, yeah this is an example of one of our slip cases this is a linen slip case god so bless that's beautiful oh <laughs> <laughs> so, um, these this is Ogre Gods, which is a really cool series, like dark fantasy series. Like Christian, you'd probably really be into this. Oh, yeah. uh, I could probably get you a copy. Um, but this is a four volume series, like Black Box is two, so nothing this large. This is very big. Oh. But um, these are these are eight and a half by eleven. Um, so these are almost exactly the form factor of the two black box books that are in the slipcase. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I, we go all out like stuff like this foil yes. and, the, you know, various laminations and textures and, you know, the casings and stuff, those rounded corners there, there, that's the stuff that comes from people like really going the extra mile on Kickstarter that makes the books better. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, adding extra content, adding some behind the scenes stuff and everything. Those are things that are not, I mean, we want to do all these things all the time, but we really thrive when we have the support of people on Kickstarter. And we really want to, you know, supply that collector's market with stuff that's really exclusive. That's going to be rare, you know, like a David Mack part cover. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. And congrats to him for getting nominated uh, for an Eisner because he just did. So yes. That's all. Awesome. Yes. And we did too for uh, Beneath the Trees for, for our children's book. So that's great. I love it. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of the box sets. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a, I've, I've, I've been, oh my gosh, uh, collected editions have been a part of me. And I mean, that's what my channel focuses on uh, for the last, well, seven years. We just did seven year celebration. Wow. Uh, so I, I do work with a lot of publishers. And there's just something beautiful about these box sets and European style graphic novels that I love so much. Uh, you, you've seen humanoids bring some of them over here, especially with like the Incal or anything with Jodo, the Jodo verse, but magnetic press and you all had me with the, what was it? The love box set. Oh and man. The, yeah. That's the carbon great. and silicone. Like th what's those. Your favorite, what's your favorite love book? Is it the dinosaur? Cause mine's a dinosaur. Well, I think the, the 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 third grader in me would always like the dinosaur, but the the I think it's the tiger. I, I like that one the most. That one's great. Yeah, I love it, uh, and it's one I push for a lot of people that because you know it's easy to read. I guess I don't. That, yeah, they're, they're, they're word. Those are wordless. Um, mm -hmm. uh, all the storytelling is visual purely, yep. um, and those love books are ones that I see a lot in retail. So they're has to be a well, I mean I know from our numbers but there is a very good response to those books like uh they're, they're great one of the, the, I'd say the two biggest things that we do at magnetic as far as genres are science fiction obviously like we we love bringing over these bad lay books and doing things like black box chronicles um but also the uh nature stuff like we talked about Gio Giovanni before letters from yes. animals and from animals and uh you know we have we have entire series of you know nature-based children's books and stuff so th that's also something that we like really like to excel at and that's something that a lot of europeans they, they make a lot of books about nature and a well, lot as many as science fiction <laughs> uh, yeah and that was something that a lot of us here like in america we hadn't grown accustomed to it the the european style of storytelling was always you know hey 
it's different, right? We're, we're used to here in America, monthly comics over there. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you want a volume two. It's going to be some time. <laughs> like it's going to be seven years or whenever we that, get to. That's one of the benefits of working on this with Mark and working with magnetic and stuff is that we have it, we have it set up to continue. You know, we, mm -hmm. we knew there was going to be a response to this. We didn't know how big it was going to be, but we always had plans to continue and do more without worrying about, you know, some abstract retail metric to decide our fate, you know, because you're on, you're on Kickstarter. That's a big part of why to use Kickstarter for black box, something like that too, because you're also building up an audience that, you know, I think they will enjoy it a lot. And I think they'll be, they'll be back as we release more. And the more that people climb on board and support it, the more stuff is going to come from it, you know, with that level of talent and with that level of magnetic quality and the, you know, the awesome science fictionists of it all that horrible future Mark wrote a lot of these stories and he's really good at science fiction. So very in the know on everything that's going on in technology. We have many nights where our creative sessions just evolve into talking about AI and like space and like what NASA's doing and, you know, right. <laughs> so, which I'm not complaining. That's part of the creative process. We need to talk about the content. You're right. You could complain. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good, so. honestly, but it, let's be clear. It's, it's hard. It's, it's harder sci-fi, but it's also about the characters and the emotions. Yes. Ultimately. Right. Yeah. So this is not like for people who are just like all about the science. The science is there. You know, one of the things I talked about um, somewhere else was like we, we have this loop station that Chris invented, you know, that goes that encircles a planet. And the original the concept first, was made it just like way yeah. too thick and too big and it was too close to the planet. I'm like, that wouldn't work with physics. And we actually like I insisted that they made it in geosynchronous orbit and they, they had tethers to to counterweight. I, I, I wanted a, a backdrop of realism to the character stories. So most of the stuff is not going to be appreciated except for a very small bit of the audience, but um, it's important to me. And it's kind of like magnetic press in general, right? A lot of people aren't gonna appreciate the curved corners, but the ones who do are gonna really appreciate it. So I took that to the storytelling level as well. I think, um, so when I was talking about monthlies and floppies, we I think in in America at least we still have the mentality of like having those kind of serial books coming out every month and reading capes and cows. Uh, but a lot There's of it is nothing wrong with it. Yeah, and, and obviously you know I still love it, but I think a lot of it has changed here in recent time. I think we've become more acceptable to other things uh, besides obviously manga because there was a big boom of manga in the late nineties sure. and early aughts, but a lot of it has changed because a lot of writers have wanted to go that way. A lot of the big names like Frank Miller or Ed Brubaker have always liked that format of like, hey, I just want to release a book. I don't want to release sure. a comic. And I like that. I like that now people that are following these creators are like, oh, yeah, I'll wait for the next criminal book and it'll be a graphic novel. It won't be single issue. Or I'll wait for the next Frank Miller Sin City book that he's now working on, the, the what Frank Miller presents with Dan Didio. And it'll be in a graphic novel format. It won't be a single issue. Our, our, our buddy uh, our buddy Jason Copeland releasing Phil Tilt, this massive, yep. <laughs> you know, yep. unbelievable. You know? Yep. And, I think it's wonderful that now, you know, it's kind of like become a thing here in America, too, that there are these type of books. And Magnetic Press was one of, the, you know, I remember like one of those few publishers that early on had adapted that style of like it's going to there are no single issues that they're releasing. I would, I would, I would also say, um, Omar, like a lot of this comes from, well, I just started you know, two years ago working at Magnetic Press, which seems like mm -hmm. yesterday because it's just like book after book after book, which is fine. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I love bringing everyone these gorgeous hard covers with Mike. But um, Mike and I both worked at Archaea, which, you know, yes. it doesn't exist. It was absorbed by Boom. So it's, it's like a piece of Boom, you know, a label now. But um, I used to laugh when we were in the office, we would laugh because it was like only hardcovers, only hardcover. You know, Mike continues that commitment, right? From there. Yeah, I love some of those yeah, uh, labyrinth books are beautiful or dark, well, dark crystal, dark crystal books. But if you remember, they did a free comic book day 
that was a hardcover. Oh, they did. It was the mouse guard and which is crazy. <laughs> Sorry, Tay. I, I, Sorry, I, still, have I <laughs> still have that. I still have that copy. I can't believe it was free. That's awesome. I forgot about that. that. Yeah, wild. it was limited. You know, for the collector mm -hmm. market, <laughs> but <laughs> to do to have stores have like whatever it was 20, 25 copies of a free hardcover, even though it was at like uh, six nine comic size, you know, yeah, it doesn't make anything crazy. But man, taking that commitment to quality forward with magnetic, you know, that that's where it, that really has roots in that, like a lot of it, like especially with me, like because I did my first book with Archaea and they just gave me a hardcover and like. Yeah, sure. Maybe it's because Sean's name is on the cover too, right? But it's my book. I wrote the whole thing, and it's like, like I think that Americans want, you know, a two hundred page story that's a single story that they don't have to like gamble if it's going to continue and like you know, if it's going to get cut off at the knees and something they really enjoy. But at the same time, like creators have the option to use different outlets to bring these stories to people too now. You know, yeah, and, and so I'm not. And I think there's still a lot of uh, obviously there are readers in in this hobby, and then there are collectors that are like, oh, sure. I have to have uh, this book, you know, in this first appearance of this character. Now, in graphic novel format, you're not going to get that, but in graphic but but in graphic novel format, you're going to get crazy stuff like this. There you go. Limited. <laughs> the one, yeah. No, this is the legends. This one right here, the limited. <laughs> Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? This is the kind of stuff that you're gonna get through collected editions. This is kind of like your rare first printing or whatever, you know, first appearance of a character in single issue. Sure. So even within this medium that's of reprinting single issues, there's still sought after books that sometimes go in like some of these old trade paperbacks go for more money than the actual comics that are collected in there. It's insane. And and just like any hobby, there are collectors that yeah, Christian knows he collects those mythic legends. I looked at some of those that are out of print. They're insane. When they when when those mythic legends go out of print, those toys. Oh, are, oh yeah. Sorry, my from... my sound got messed up. Um, yeah, these a lot of these things are like limited edition stuff, and and those are, I mean, I think it's like it's good and bad. I think with comics, it's it's good you know you can do that i i think that there's enough you know you can get away with with the uh, readers right but i think with the collector's market's a little a little different because i mean there's millions and millions and they're not just here in america it's like overseas so then mm -hmm. it, you, it kind of gets messy you know like the markup on that stuff online on like ebay and everything it, it gets really messy it's like something could be fifty dollars and then a couple of weeks later, you see it on eBay for like five hundred dollars, and you're like, "What?" You know. So I don't know. It gets a little, a little messy on that end. I, and I think the same can be said about the graphic novel uh, format too. Like when things go out of print, they go for outrageous amounts of money, especially if it's somebody that is seeking after these things that sees it somewhere, whether on Instagram or on a YouTube video. I, I don't know how many times I think I've done. I, I do a segment on my channel, like I call it Hidden Gems, where I talk about graphic novels that not a lot of people talk about. And it and it's one of these things that's kind of like a double-edged sword because a lot of these books are now out of print. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like a lot of these books are out of print. And oh my gosh, it, like when people seek after them, it just became like, I remember one time I did Oko. Do you remember that book, Chris? Mm -hmm. So they they released the soft cover collection of all of them together, mm -hmm. and that thing is impossible to find. And I talked about it, and because uh, they they never collected all of them in hardcover, and that's a shame because the book was great. But oh my gosh, I remember when I talked about it, and people were like, "I don't even see it online." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know it's kind of hard to find, and I don't even know what it's going for these days because it's never been reprinted. Maybe who knows one day." Um, but yeah, even within this, like collected editions, when things go out of print, it just goes, it, it's insane. So, uh, that's, but, that's a great plug because once, once this Kickstarter is over, <laughs> you're, you're not getting that the David Mac hardcover, like, like 
That's it. It's that's, over. That's, that's what I wanted to bring it back to. I feel like Magnetic Press has found a way to be like, look, this is the limited version. The stuff that you're going to find in stores, you're not going to feel that special with. I mean, you're still making a great, beautiful book, uh, but it feels like, you know, video games have been doing that for years. Sure. Hell, I don't think even video games give you a freaking physical copy of a game anymore. I think it's just about the box set code. with like yeah. a figure and a book, and you may get a digital code to download the video game. Yeah, I, but I used to be a beta tester really for Sierra Online, and you used to get maps and decoder wheels and manuals with like backstories and next like, next, next campaign mark. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean now it's just like download code, right? You know, so yeah, there's. Yeah. Um, there's definitely room for these collected editions. But yeah, um, our, our, the, the slipcase for this, I was showing this one off. Oh, yeah. It, but the slipcase for Black Box Chronicles is... Man, you keep showing that box set. I love this box it's set. The reflection <laughs> in the light is perfect. Just keep holding it. There Amazing. you go. Good thing I have a window. Um, <laughs> but this is a lin just a linen slipcase, just, right? <laughs> but the, the uh, Black Box Chronicles one has a magnetic flap that closes. Oh, yeah. So we tried to make the slipcase like the actual black boxes in the story, like have it have some functionality, right? So that's also a first for magnetic and something we have never done, putting these magnetic latches, you know? So it's like you're actually closing a black box to keep all the stories in the black box anthology in, you know? So it's, it's like trying to be more immersive, the design of these slipcases. So going forward, you know, I'm definitely, uh, you know, interested in taking multiple campaigns and really thinking about how to present these slipcases because slipcases, it's not just packaging, you know, it's like this, it's, you have to interact with it to get the book out, right? So having that is like, to me, it's a really important distinction, this as a magnetic book and as any book with a slipcase on Kickstarter or elsewhere. So, and again, that's only on the Kickstarter. We're not doing that at retail because that's where it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I used the picture of the actual black box um, that you all have on Kickstarter on the thumbnail. Sure. Tell me about the book. We know um, I, I got the premise and we know what it's mm -hmm. about, but about the book, like how many pages we're looking at, what's going to be in the box set. I will, um, I will answer that from a production standpoint. Yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Because I am production at Magnetic Press. So I love that I have you on here. You're the perfect person for the answer. I have my question. hat over there. Next time we do a call, I'll wear that hat, and we'll do a magnetic production. He, talk he switches about how to, how to build horrible books, future. How to the casing. We can talk. I can, you know, if I can screen share, I'll share InDesign files. Like I'm, I'm all for it. So I'll remember um, that. Okay. That is, and that includes showing black boxes as an example. Whatever, it's fine. So, okay. um, so uh, black box chronicles. Mm -hmm. is uh is 162 pages 72 72 thank you <laughs> it's 172 we added a story on the way out that's why i said that because mark wanted to have a more fitting kind of closure on it you know and it was a very high concept sci-fi story that he wanted to end on so it ended up being longer which is good for everybody because it's also really, it's one of my favorite stories in the book too. So I'm glad it went in. Initially as the production manager on the project, I was like, we cannot add another story. This is ridiculous. Like I cannot handle this. Chris has to be like right. horrible future and magnetic. I have to be he's, both. he's like my editor and partner. It's very interesting sometimes. Oh, well, so he'll be like, listen, I'm speaking as your editor. You're not getting that story. in." I'm like, I'm speaking as the creator and we're going to get that story in. Every time I'm on a Zoom call for Magnetic, uh, Monday and Thursday calls, or if I'm at, on Zoom at night with Mark and some artist or whoever, right, a uh, guest writer, whoever, I'm like, I'm speaking as Magnetic Press. You cannot do that. And then, then I go to Magnetic Press and go, I'm speaking as Heartful Feature. Can they do that? <laughs> you know, back and forth. But it's 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 over 170 pages. Um, it's. You know, it's only a hardcover on Kickstarter. It's being a trade paperback, living as a trade paperback in retail, which will be readily available. Um, the interesting thing about this, too, is it comes uh, with... Chris, second I'm book. so sorry. I'm so sorry yeah. to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that it's only available as a hardcover through Kickstarter. Only. The so David the hardcover Mac will not hardcover. be available through the no. direct market. No. 
Okay. That's that's definitely the differentiation between the two. The soft that's cover. A, that, paper that's cut. a huge difference. It's okay. a huge difference. Um, so, but the, you know, the slip case on the Kickstarter also comes with a book called Design Space, which is a visual dictionary encyclopedia for the universe that all these stories take place in in the anthology. And it's illustrated by Shane Molina, who is a priceless human being and artist. Um, he used to do top sketch cards. Um, no offense to tops, but you lost them. He should be doing much more than sketch cards. He is amazing artist, technical artist. Um, you can see it on the Kickstarter. Uh, tomorrow there's going to be an update focusing solely on him in that book. That is also a hardcover, and that is you know a hundred around a hundred pages, so of his illustrations. So there's a lot going on in that slipcase, and we also unlocked a sketchbook, which is a linen sketchbook with all the work in progress thumbnails, page layouts from all these artists, uh, Oming, everybody who worked on it, Zach. So th there's like a plethora of con. I have a file called um, Plethora. <laughs> okay. And it's an image of all the stuff in the campaign kind of falling slowly. I use it to advertise and it's completely accurate. It's, it's an overwhelming amount of content on the Kickstarter. It's a lot. So... Okay, so we talked about the designs of the of the books mm -hmm. and only available through Kickstarter and hardcover format. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the tiers, because this is what a lot of people, you know, want to <laughs> know. Like, I know you you have a digital, you have a trade, I assume, and then the, mm -hmm. the hardcover. But tell, why don't you tell me about the different tiers? People are, um, you know. The, the soft cover is there, you know, if there's someone who's a, it's for, not for collectors, of course, it's, it's for a first time buyer that's like, this is a new idea, you know, a new property, you know, um, we don't really know what this is other than what the Kickstarter is, you know, telling us we have no experience with it. So I'm going to dip my toe in and I'm going to try this out. And like, we want to welcome people like that. We don't want to always have um, only tiers that are, you know, out of the reach of people who aren't collectors, right? Mm -hmm. But we always want to offer things to collectors, you know, and that starts with the David Mack hardcover exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, we have, you know, next up, you can just get both hardcovers, the David Mack hardcover exclusive and design space, this art encyclopedia, both mm -hmm. hardcovers together. Then after that, you can get a um, slipcase, which has them both inside, and that's the magnetic flap slipcase yeah then if you go one higher there's one called the scavenger tier and then that tier is the slipcase all that stuff previously right um hardcovers only and it also comes with two those miniature mark models one that mark was showing off those come with that and those two models come with blueprint schematics by shane and then um it also comes with a deck of cards cards with Shane's artwork on in it. World kind of, in yeah. world kind of in world kind of cards. Um there's only 55 left. There's That's only 55. <laughs> there's like, not there's a lot 55 left. 55 left of that one. So like there were a lot of there were 500 initially correct? 500 uh there were 200 of that high end. Oh, that one. Right. Yes. Yeah. And then um after that we just added 3 days ago another tier called the scavenger plus tier. So that tier comes with everything mentioned in the scavenger tier that I just said, plus it comes with three art reproductions from Christian, Oming, and Eric Donovan, who all did a story in the book. And mm -hmm. these are reproductions, eight and a half by 11 reproductions, signed. And there's only two of those left, right, Mark? Two left right now. There's I mean, like literally left. somebody listening yeah, every, to this. Yeah, every time we add something- right now, there's two left and then they're gone. That's it. Yeah. So, and we have no plan on um, doing more of this. You know, that that is it. So there's two of those left and that's it. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to see, this is our final campaign push. We have a lot of, we have almost everything unlocked. Uh, the one thing that we don't have unlocked right now, major thing, is Magnetic makes, and this is for collectors, if you buy Magnetic books off of Kickstarter, if you pledge to get your books, you know that most of the time you get a collector coin. Mm -hmm. You get this coin. I'll grab some. 
because I have a ton. <laughs> but yeah, so we're about to unlock this coin, and believe it or not, like even in the comments uh, on the, the card, people people want the coin. People love. You know, so people here's love here's one of our previous coins. This is a coin spinning coin. This was from San Diego for our campaign. We had a San Diego magazine we put out. Uh, this is from Ogre Gods, which is the slipcase I was just showing you. Yeah, so that's the one I was, I was trying to find. Yeah, so this one is the material that the black box one will be because it's that wow. black. Okay. So, and the black box coin is a hexagon in world currency from the universe. So the, these coins, magnetic puts, you know, as a as a goal on all the campaigns. So we're about to hit this. We're what do we mark like? Five thousand dollars away. How many back? Yeah, we're at we're at eighty three eight right now. Yeah. So these are these are significant, and, th and that comes at ninety. These are they're they're solid, <laughs> and they really commemorate each experience we have on Kickstarter um, for everybody. Like I I can't wait when I work on these at Magnetic to get the coin to just feel like we completed something we started, you know, it's this feeling of completion. And like, we really think it's important to hit the coin because like our coin is like 90,000. We're very close to getting it. And um, we want the backers to feel like, you know, they're all for part of that completion. You know, put the coin up on the wall, put it in, put it next to the book, you know, don't put it in the slipcase. That's bad. How many, how many Kickstarters have you been a part of Chris? Uh, with magnetic. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably like ten officially, okay. but like it's more than that though. Like if you look it up on my profile. <laughs> uh, when uh, when do you see when do you see the biggest climb? Like is it does it come at the beginning? Does it come at the end? Like whenever whenever these things happen. It's tomorrow after this podcast. It's tomorrow after <laughs> this. <laughs> a lot of pressure on me. All right, right. Omar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll buy 800 copies myself. No, it's there is a retail tier where you can come close. <laughs> um, so, and and if there's any retailers out there that are watching this, there is a retail tier with five copies of the David Mack hardcover exclusive. Get that for your store. Don't wait to order through Diamond. It's cheaper to order it through us than order it through Diamond anyway, and get those hardcovers at that price. You should well, jump I do have that. retailers that uh, watch this. Show. Yeah, you you'll you will be happy you did because you're not gonna. It's like it doesn't exist. There, I mean, there's a good chance that David Mack could win the Eisner this year, right? I mean, uh -huh. he 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 did a really solid story um, for Southern all these years with um, you know, I, I think he has a good chance. So this could be like you know one of the last covers he did before winning the Eisner. Yeah. So I I see the biggest jump uh, in within the last three days all the time, you know that's the curve mm -hmm. because people and this is anyone who's thinking about buying anything that's like limited that's sitting there where there's like twenty or five things left, they're gonna come at the end in a drove, and they're gonna clean that out. They there's a this campaign has been very different because of what this book is, who's attached to it, and everything. If you look at the numbers. They go up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, down. A lot of campaigns, even what was that one? Megalith, the one that's 300K, yeah. right? Yeah. Even yep. their curve, if you look at it on backer tracker, is like, it's like a yo, right? Ours is like, beginning. Do, 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 she's like got teeth, you know? Mm -hmm. right. So I'm expecting a big rush at the end to take this stuff away off our hands out of inventory. <laughs> It always happens anyway, but with this one, I think there's going to be a significant, like, jump in. And then there's also, like, a lot of press coming up this week after mm -hmm. the holiday weekend, and a lot a lot more people are going to know about it. So if, if people are watching it, just keep that in mind. So and that's not me trying to sell. That's just me as a magnetic person, not a horrible feature person, just talking about how. I approve. I know you approve. It's what you want to hear. No, I mean, but you know, there there are some um, outlets that are going to be uh, speaking about this, and uh -huh. I think a lot of your listeners are going to be happy that they heard about it first here. Sure. Yeah. I, I it's uh, you. Uh, Magnetic Press puts out a lot of great stuff, and it definitely it, it's. I have people that read. 
trades and I have people that collect really nice uh, collected editions and and then sometimes both. They can buy the hardcover, put it in some protective thing and save it forever. Then they could support Shane and buy the trade paperback. Yes. Okay, so then I have to ask, with something like this that is limited edition, Kickstarter, you is it pretty much we're talking print on demand? I assume you print a few extras in case things go bad. No, or... um, we we print it like anyone else. You know, okay. we, we have a, you know, these things are going to retail no matter what. You know, these books. Well, no, yeah. not the paperback, but the the box sets. Well, the box sets. The limited uh, edition. Box oh, sets. yeah, we have we have a certain order number that that's what we're going to order. You okay, know, and that, that's what we list. So, um, yeah, it's it's an accurate representation of what's available. And that's and that's it, right? Maybe years down the road, you can revisit a reprint or something. Well, <laughs> we're we're planning on doing other things with Black Box. Horrible Future has other projects. You're probably going <clears> to <throat> magnetic wire. Okay. And, and from a writing non-collectible standpoint, mm -hmm. I mean, Chris and I already know where this is going. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. This is not going to end up like, I'm not going to name any properties, but we all know some that have collapsed at the end because you're like, whether it's a television show or, 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 or a comic series, yeah. and you're just like, what? They, they didn't know where they were going. And you kind of hoped they were the whole time. But, you know, like seven years into it, you're like, I think they're making this up as they go along. So Chris and I- <laughs> it's very seven years. You're talking about, I mean, talking about loss? There could be, I am not talking about any... Uh, Dude, I thought you were talking about loss too or Game of Thrones, but go ahead. Go ahead. Isn't I mean, that funny it, that that's the first it, thing people it, think of? Isn't it funny? Well, when like, you said but, seven years, I was like, well, were there seven seasons or six, six years? I remember. Six years, eight years. But but the point is, is that when, when Chris and I sat down to make this, um, we actually already put together a treatment for like where this is going. Even though it started oh, out yeah. as an anthology, yeah. the characters and the locations, like we know what importance they play later mm -hmm. already. We know the end game here. And so we yeah. like to create that third act, that, that third act that doesn't exist in this anthology of standalones. That third act exists, you know, and that's one of the things that I'm, I'm particularly proud of. We put a lot of extra work to hide clues. <laughs> like, I mean, way too much work. Hide clues work. that you'll be able to come back to this edition you know, this limited edition right here. And yeah. you'll see the origin stories of some things that are very important in the future. And I'll say too, the goal after the stretch coin is a starter module for an RPG. So that should give you a clue as to what <laughs> is also coming after this. Um, yeah, I mean, if, get, if you get to... 100K, it'll unlock that. You know, and that also is the first steps to doing that as a full blown thing. And, so. and, and to talk about the scope, right? If you go to blackboxchronicles.com slash Lily right now, mm -hmm. um, we actually recorded a song with a recording artist of an in world character who happens to be a recording artist. Um, <laughs> and there's a whole story about her, but you can go, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple Music, it's on Tidal right now. It exists in the real world right now that you can listen to a, a fully composed um, song. I mean, like we have, we have big plans here. Yeah. That, uh, and I like Happy that. Magnetic is on board with all of them. <laughs> I, I, I like that. Uh, Christian, can, um, <laughs> what, what did you think of, of this particular anthology? Were you, are do you only get to know the story that you're partaking in or <laughs> did you get to read any of the other stories? Um, yeah, just mostly the one I worked on. Uh, and Mark and I had discussions about some of the others. Um, I actually, I think I was, maybe I was the first person to start. Is that right? Or you're uh, one first. of the pinups, your pinup. Right. Uh, that, that, that is currently, it was unlocked as a stretch goal. Right. Was one of, if not the first piece of art for this project, it's a uh, crash spaceship with a bunch of like, um, I don't know, like space marine type people holding guns with this really cool um, alien type foliage, like um, the thorns and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, Christian created that piece and it's been unlocked and everyone, everyone who, who has a physical tier is going to get a, a, a copy of that. So yeah, he, he was very early because he, I mean, like we have been working together, and um, yeah. So, 
Yeah, I think it was last year um, when I did that. I did that uh, spaceship shot and some other stuff. And, you know, Mark and I, we we talk a lot. And I remember uh, vaguely when I had, I think I started on my story. He was, uh, he was telling me about a couple others, uh, other artists that, you know, that they were planning on uh, getting to, to do them. Um, Mine, I guess mine is def. I think mine's the only, maybe the only one that's horror like a mix of horror and sci-fi. Is that correct? Yours the, is definitely the most horror. Um, yeah. Yes, I think that's I, safe. It, yes. I think it's safe to say that the the one that I worked on with Mark, that was, in, you know, uh, colored by uh, the incredible Simon Go. Um, yeah. Just amazing stuff always. Uh, in this story, it's kind of a combination of uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, a little bit of Alien, you know, like a little bit of those things thrown in there, but it's it's definitely different. Um, you know, it, it, it kind of mixes uh, things up a little bit. Um, you know, it, there's a creature or creatures, but it's there. What we went with was very, very different, not something i guess you would expect um yeah so i guess i was early on but i didn't really get to see um other stuff until much later until like I it, this happens on page one so i don't mind just giving a little taste of one of the stories christian starts with a woman who has ejected herself with a black box in a in a, in a space coffin like for a space burial and she's reciting what happened to her ship into this black box so whoever finds this coffin will be able to know what happened on the ship before so so um we tried to come up with a unique way to use a black box in a very personal way where she's she's reciting her last words um into a box like a flight data recorder so i as as the writer mark i i okay so the the we, we talked about single issues and floppies monthly books you know, those, those guys and gals have to stick to 22 pages, right? 24 pages. With something like this as an anthology, like, how do you determine, okay, this is a, this is a six-pager. This is it. This is the story that I've got to tell. <laughs> or And then how do you go from that to, oh, I, I kind of want to add more. Let's make this one 20 pages. Like, so, how, how do you determine that? I mean, that's a great point. You know, so, so our goal is roughly 10 pages each, right? Okay. And then there's a lot of outside factors and that's where Chris and I come in on, on the producing side. Right. So okay. when you get a uh, high level talent, sometimes it comes down to how many, they can't do enough pages, yeah. right. They, yeah. they only right. have enough time in this window to do eight and we got to work with what we have because we really want them on board. Um, sometimes we, there's a couple stories in here where um, we had to edit the script. Then their time freed up and they went back in and they actually filled out the two pages we were hoping for. Um, awesome. Sometimes we were, they were able to do a pinup and Chris and I realized that the pinup could be used as a splash page for a future story beat. So we had to be creative with it. I mean, so to answer your question, you know, it's as long as um, it should be, we think. Um, I would say so. I would say so. Within the one, we have one. We have one by Toru Tarada, who does uh, great Japanese artists. He he did a book for us called Small World. And then, oh, yeah. Which was a very successful yeah. Kickstarter. And this story um, is smaller world. This story is <coughs> smaller world. Nothing. No um, relation other than that as a nod to him. No relation, but he. He was only available for a certain amount of stuff, but the, his script is very playful and it can end in six pages and it does what it needs to do. And it showcases a unique use for the black box, which many of these stories have a unique reason why there is a black box too. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just one of my favorite entries and it's one of the shorter ones, you know? And then there's ones that are very long that like seem like, you know, like almost like a whole issue of something, right? Um, and, that, and that's not because someone did a better job or because some blah, blah, blah. They're all doing it uh, to the best of their ability within the production constraints 
and what's possible with the story that was presented to them, right? So these are really, you know, written out and then kind of tailor made to what's possible with the artist, I would say. You know, what, 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 can, what can be done to maximize uh, their availability and their skills. So I'm satisfied with all of them. They all, no matter what the length they are, they've been, you know, picked over and shaped to be what they need to be, um, considering all those factors. And the other thing I said about the black box is having unique reasons. They're not, uh, without spoiling anything, they're not all a ship is crashing and then they found a black box, right? It's not all like this thing exploded and then a black box is floating in space and it was there, right? They're all, they're all really clever because it's not just like the black box technology in this universe is used for more than just like a spaceship, right? So I'm, I'm going to... I'm not spoiling it, I don't think, but I'm going to say we use one of my, my stories that I wrote as an example. There's a there's a story with like officers from like a health agency. They're like police officers. Um, I was like, how do you how do you have a black box in a story where it's like enemy of the state and they're, ch they're these cops are chasing this guy, you know, for for what's not going to be spoiled? How do you have a black? He's not in a spaceship. <laughs> well, then I thought, well, you know what? Police officers have body cams, right? And black boxes record everything in this universe, all the biometrics, everything within a certain radius, right? Yeah. So why can't these cops on this planet just be using a smaller version of black boxes like that technology to as body cams, you know? Um, and there's clever ways to use the black boxes like that in many of these stories. So I, I'm really happy about that because... Once we decided that it's, it's you know, this technology is ubiquitous, it's just in the universe, it's like, well, how can we play with it? How can we use it? You know, how can we stretch where these stories can take place? How can we get into these, these different nooks and crannies of this world, right? Without a ship crashing into it. <laughs> well, well, that's what was fun about having so many different um, artists mm -hmm. involved, right? Because you talk about having a black box and it, it's, if you imagine uh, um, reconstructing a plane crashes flight data recorder, mm -hmm. you have experts who come in and they try to fill in the blanks. They have the flight controls. They, they see that the GPS turned. They might hear some cockpit data recordings and they all try to figure out what happened. Did they mention that there was smoke and whatnot? So the mm -hmm. way that we envisioned every story is they find this box and it's not gonna be absolute and there's a little bit of interpretation. And I'm not saying it's like an unreliable narrator, but I'm saying each illustrator has the ability to fill in the gaps of how is this going to be presented? Um, it's not all taken from camera views. There's, there's liberties taken. You're, you're getting the full story like, like you'd be presented with a, a, a typical comic or a typical uh, television show. But the general idea is a black box had to have somehow recorded moments of this that could have been reconstructed. Okay, well, th this the anthology has definitely piqued my interest, and I'm curious how it's all connected. And um, and I and whenever you do anth whenever whenever I see anthologies, and it's usually you know the, the same writers. I, I like that because sometimes like stories are connected in ways that you don't see at first, and uh, trying to figure that out. I really enjoyed that about uh, these type of stories. So, with four days left. In the in the Kickstarter campaign, uh, and then when this is available worldwide, so anybody that kickstarts kickstarts the book or any of these tiers will be able to ship worldwide. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. Okay. Uh, when can you expect the physical copies to start going out? Where? Let me double check. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Because it's a, it's a very reasonable date, but I don't want to make it extremely reasonable. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We'd because rather, because you, you never know with Kickstarters, right? This could be somebody's first Kickstarter, and maybe they're using okay. the people. Okay, here you go. Year. Here's the official Chris statement. September. Okay. September. 2023, September 2023, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, yeah okay. I mean, like, we we literally just – so, so I mean, this is a uh, writer's proof. This is one that I've gone through. Every single page, every single lettering, um, ev it, it, it's done. This is done. This is already being sent to uh, production. So this is not, uh, the money is not being used to develop the book. The book is finished. Okay. 
Okay. The money, the money is being used to bring gigantic pallets of this book that you guys are buying on Kickstarter pledging for <laughs> on the slow boat from China. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Because hard covers are very, very heavy and hard to get from overseas. So. I just, uh, I just moved. Uh, well, mm -hmm. I moved last year, and I have over five thousand books. My God, yeah, yeah, I have a lot. <laughs> this is a small. Well, I, you know, I should have, I should have expected it. I mean, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm insane. I mean, and that's not even including the manga. Uh, and and let me tell you, like, you, <laughs> oh my gosh, it was hell. So then move, you know, move, moving those boxes, I can't imagine moving. Like, I, at least they have, at least they have forklifts. I assume, right? <laughs> Like it just yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, our distribution has pork lips. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's, Chris it's, might have to go out there. It's, and tough, it's it. tough because we have, we have, um, you know, we have, we have to get the books in. Mm -hmm. They have to go to different regions too, and then get distributed overseas as well. Um, that's really, you know, you guys backing this, this. This is what's making that kind of logistical stuff possible. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of it. Um, it's like an unseen cost that a lot of people, you know, you know, you don't think about, it, you don't see, right? You know, yeah. you, you have a, you have a lot of smaller Kickstarters, you know, get caught with their pants down about shipping, right? And and like getting things made and sent. And then when you start talking about hardcovers, you have to be like hardcover slipcase sets, sets and uh, magnetic enclosures. You have to be very careful that these things come in undamaged on time. To the right places, right? It's 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 a whole different thing, and that that's something my my boss can speak to more because that's his world. Um, but um, I don't deal with it. But Mike Kennedy and Magnetic Press are very good at it. So awesome. Um, well, obviously, I can't wait to see this book. I can't wait to see. Uh, it, it, the final product. I can't uh, wait to read the stories in physical format. While I do from time to time dabble in digital, obviously mm -hmm. it's physical for me. Um, that's, I just, so I appreciate things like this, the extra, <laughs> I guess more than one mile that you all go through. For, the for this, the digital part. version is there for like my mom. You know? <laughs> well, like, as, as that should be on a t-shirt. If that's not on the back of the book. As a blurb, <laughs> but as a writer, I I am there for the page turns, right? You know, yeah. there's so many yeah. moments in this where it's a reveal, and you just don't get that when you swipe up, right? You, <laughs> you it's it's that act of like what's going to happen. You turn the page, so that's actually really the reason I had this copy made was because I just wanted to test those t page turns physically. You know, I wanted to turn the page and be like, what's the what what does this feel like? Is it landing exactly how I wanted it to? So I mean, I hundred percent appreciate uh, the fact that 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 you appreciate. And, and oh, absolutely, and not just me. My my viewers appreciate. Like, like viewers, yeah. Uh, I've had so, I actually had someone gift me. One of my viewers gifted me the uh, my buddy Kyle gifted me the box set of the silicon. What was it the Was that the Shangri La box set? Uh, I, I yeah, it was uh, uh, Bad Life. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> that is a beautiful subcase. Uh, and yeah, you're getting nice comments here. Thank from, you, Jason. Um, from our viewers. Like, yeah. so, uh, you know, it, I'm, I'm sure you will meet that mark and everybody will get a coin. I can't wait, like I said, to see the final product and uh, talk to, to you all. Maybe if you're working on a similar project sometime down the road or talk to Magnetic Press about some other stuff. You know, um, you, have, you, have, you have Mitch's uh, messenger handle. So, <laughs> yes, you know, I've known um, Mitch for a while. Yeah, Magnet. I know Mitch's shelf very well. You know, he's <laughs> big, big old on the buddy shelf. Uh, yeah. yeah, if you ever want, um, if you ever see a project that's interesting from Magnetic that you would like to have some in-depth info about or a copy mm -hmm. or anything like that, just, just let Mitch know and I'll make sure it gets out to you. We can schedule something. And the same thing goes for Horrible Future with, you know, the other half of me and Mark. Um, anything I love this. we're doing, you know, <laughs> we will also, you know, definitely talk about it or answer any yeah. questions. So what, what kind of, th okay, before we go, mm -hmm. what kind yeah. of things, without going into detail, can we expect from mm -hmm. Magnetic Press later on? Since we're uh, not, not, God, not necessarily wanna, sticking the Kickstarter, but just a, so much. a small okay. hint as to what's okay. to come. So, um, 
I will say we are working with a property that you will know about next month that mm -hmm. is a huge science fiction property. Okay. Back and I will say that after that in the fall, there's another one. Nice. Okay? nice. And I'm also going to say that we are expanding our gaming stuff like crazy also. So, um, and uh, Black Box is also going to be part of that expansion with the gaming. So, uh, and also, if you like Japanese comics, pay attention next month. And if you like uh, Bad Light, so um, Sang the Law and everything, mm -hmm. uh, pay attention. There, there's a lot. There, there's a lot. There's a lot. We really are growing as a company magnetic in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of growing pains and there's a lot of investments and there's a lot of like, you know, new things we're learning as we're doing it. And we're, you know, we're tr checking off our list as we go expanding and it's very, very exciting. I, there's not a day I don't wake up that I'm excited. I'm always excited. <laughs> I love hearing that. I think I, that's, that's yeah. great. It's, it's nice to see like, my, my boss calls us the little guy and everything, but we're the little guy who gets nominated for Eisner's constantly. And we produce some of the most gorgeous editions of books out there that are hardcovers in the graphic, you know, sector. So I, it, it's not surprising to me that a lot of the things we're going to announce are going to be what they are. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see what they are, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for everybody. No, it's okay. I get it. it was I want to see the dreams so bad. It'll be worth the wait. Yeah. I uh, I have been. I I've, <laughs> I get to announce books for Marvel Comics, and I have you had mm -hmm. two and a half years of holding something in me that I finally let well, go. Last you week. go first, and then and if it's good <laughs> enough, we'll, we'll give you one. Well, now it's already out. Now everybody knows I'm about kidding. ROM and Micronauts, so I, I don't mind. But yeah, I've known about those for two and a half years, and I've had to right. keep quiet yeah. and lie to people and be like, one day, <laughs> one day we may get that, and now, <laughs> now everybody knows. And yeah, I think it's, it's everyone so in this conversation right right now, except you, Omar, knows what I'm talking about. Most of it. <laughs> <laughs> not very nice. <laughs> Sorry That's to exclude you. You will That's be okay. included. You will be included, and you will be one of the first people contacted about some of it. Absolutely. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, and at this moment, I just want to thank everybody for joining us in the chat. Thank you to Christian. Thank you to Mark and Chris for taking the time to sit here and talk about this wonderful project that they're putting together. And Absolutely. if you don't own a magnetic press book, just look through one of my many backlogs. I've done overviews of books of their slipcases and their hardcovers or any of my halls showcases those books. They put out beautiful, beautiful books and they definitely belong in everybody's library. Uh, but that's it for us. Thank you, everybody. Smash that like button. Check out the link to their Kickstarter and stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. And thank Much you again love. to Mitch. Yes, the ship.